The OSI model, a fundamental concept in computer networking. Today we'll break down this model while exploring real-world applications, discuss the devices operating at each layer, and compare it to the now used TCP IP model. So, what is the OSI model, and why do we have it? For the 1980s, computer networks were a bit like the Wild West. Different companies all had their own proprietary networking protocols. This meant that devices from one vendor weren't guaranteed to work with another, creating isolated islands of connectivity. To solve this problem, in 1984, the International Organization for Standardization, also known as ISO, developed the OSI model, stands for the Open Systems Interconnection Model. This model aimed to create a universal language for computer networking, allowing diverse systems to communicate effectively. The OSI model is made up of seven layers. The application layer, the presentation layer, the session layer, the transport layer, the network layer, the data link layer, and finally the physical layer. A helpful way to remember this is the phrase, all people seem to need data processing. Let's break down each layer and the devices that operate on them. Let's start at the top with the application layer. This is where the network processes directly interact with the end user applications. An example of this would be a web browser or an email client operating at this layer. Just below that is the presentation layer. It translates the data between applications and the network, handling things like encryption and compression. Next, we have the session layer. It manages connections between applications, keeping track of your login sessions and ensuring you stay connected as you navigate through different pages of a website. Moving down, we reach the transport layer. This is where we find the protocols such as TCP and UDP. Devices such as firewalls and load balancers operate here, ensuring data flows securely and efficiently. The network layer is where the routing happens. Routers and layer free switches work here, using IP addresses to determine the best path for your data to travel from the source to its destination. The second to last layer is the data link layer. This is where switches and network interface cards operate, ensuring data is correctly packaged and delivered between devices on the same network. Finally, we have the physical layer. This layer deals with the actual transmission of the data. It includes the physical components of networking, the cables, fiber optics, and wireless signals that carry our data. As a real world example, let's walk through how an email travels across a network using the OSI model. When you send an email, it goes through each layer of the OSI model. Starting at the application layer, your email client composes the message. This is where you interact with the software to write and send your email. Next, at the presentation layer, your message is prepared for transmission. This involves encrypting the content to ensure its security as it travels across the network. The session layer then manages your login session, ensuring you remain authenticated with the email server throughout the process. As the email moves to the transport layer, it may encounter a firewall. Firewall checks the traffic to ensure it's safe and adheres to the network security policies. At the network layer, routers come into play. They determine the best path for your email to travel from your device to the recipient's email server. The data link layer involves switches, which effectively pass the email data between devices on the local network. Finally, at the physical layer, the email data is converted into signals that travel through network cables or wireless transmissions. Interestingly, this process doesn't stop at the recipient's email server. When the email reaches its destination, the entire process occurs in reverse. The signal is received through the physical media, switches and routers direct it to the correct device, firewalls check the incoming traffic, the recipient's session is authenticated, the message is decrypted, and finally it appears in the recipient's email client. This bidirectional flow through the OSI layers ensure that the email is properly sent, routed, secured, and delivered, allowing seamless communication between the sender and the recipient. While the OSI model is great for understanding networks, we actually don't use it in the modern world. We actually use what is called the TCP IP model. The TCP IP model is simpler with only four layers. It consists of the application layer, which combines the top three layers of the OSI model, transport layer, which remains the same, an internet layer, which is similar to the network layer, and the network interface, which combines the bottom two layers. TCP IP was developed alongside the internet, making it more practical. The OSI model is theoretical, while the TCP IP model is the actual protocol suite used in internet communications today. Despite this, the OSI model is still crucial for network professionals. It provides a more detailed framework for troubleshooting and understanding network operations. That concludes our overview of the OSI model. While we primarily use the TCP IP model in practice, understanding the OSI model provides a deeper insight into network operations and troubleshooting. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this explanation helpful in your journey to understanding computer networks. As always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I love hearing from you. 
And if you're looking for more to watch, check out one of the recommended videos on your screen now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.